Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modelling in the Midlife Crisis. My name's Andy, and today I'm going to do you a quick What's in the Box kit review on my Mini Art 135 scale 38071 Calvados Cellars, which is from their Miniatures series. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with what Calvados is, because I wasn't, uh, Calvados is actually this stuff here, which is a Normandy traditional Normandy drink, which is actually a brandy, which is apple flavoured, made from apples. Not quite sure if it's called apple brandy, basically. It does seem that Normandy is actually uh, quite uh, full of apples because I've actually been recently drinking uh, Normandy apple cider. Uh, the reason for the Normandy references basically is it is actually June the 5th today. So obviously we're looking at um, D-Day tomorrow, June the 6th. And in, um, well, and in anticipation of that, I am actually building some sort of D-Day theme models. I was intending to have a go with this as well. I might still do tomorrow or the next day, but I thought it was an interesting kit that basically was in theme with what I'm doing. So I thought I'd show it to you because I'm sure not many of you are aware of its existence. Oh, excuse me. So our first brew is our cart. I'm gonna need a drink. And all I've got to hand is brandy. That's probably not great. But it serves the purpose. I was going to have to try it anyway. <clears throat> ah, that's fair. Ooh. Okay, so the uh, first brew. That was kind of unexpected. The first brew is our cart. So basically we can see we've got the cart base here. We've got two cart wheels. And these parts are going to be the, the sides of the cart, I should think. As we can see, the cart has got a rather basic suspension system, which we can see here, the suspension springs. Uh, the tyres, the, sorry, the wheels actually have a metal tyre on them. And you can definitely see that there is a sort of ridged area to the wheel where the metal tyre goes on. And I'm not too sure what this part is. That's the handle and that's the legs. So that's that part there. The um, wood is quite nicely grained, so you can see quite a lot of detail on that there, which is quite nice. So even with the sort of a bit of a slapdash painting attempt, you should get quite a nice finish on that. Obviously, painting wood is kind of difficult and different to what most people do. Most people are sort of used to painting out metal, obviously, because, well, tanks and planes and bombs and things like that are made of metal, aren't they? So our first figure that we're going to look at is going to be this chap here, a rather sturdy looking Frenchman who's uh, hauling the crates. Uh, they're not particularly, I mean, they don't look particularly well defined and well detailed, these figures. But what we've got to think is you're comparing this to a military figure, which is obviously going to have a lot of webbing and a lot of pouches and a lot of things going on. So these guys are just wearing normal day to day clothes. So they do look a bit bland, but that's kind of the bland clothes that they're wearing, I suppose. So we've got that guy. You can see his dungarees obviously going on here. He's got some nice folds in the legs of his legs of his jeans. He's got his shirts rolled up. So his shirt sleeves rolled up. And he's got a, a not a particularly expressive face. But he doesn't like he's got a particularly expressive face anyway, so that's obviously what the model is based on. So the next guy is going to be this chap here, who looks like he's smoking a traditional French Galois cigarette. Uh, he has got a little bit more detail, because obviously he's got his jacket on. We can see the um, belt on his apron as well. Um, he's got his flat cap. His trousers look rather plain. His back obviously is the back of his jacket, so there's not going to be anything much going on there. And his face is, well, kind of expressionless. I don't see a cigarette, unfortunately, so obviously we're going to have to find that from somewhere else. A little bit of rolled up paper, maybe. So there we go. That's that particular one. I'm just going to have another sip of this brandy. I've got to admit, I'm not a fan of brandy. I was hoping for more apple flavour to it. It'll taste all right with some lemonade, I should think. Now, next off, we get four of these um, crates, four different sprues here. So, you can see, we've got four crates in the picture. So, we get four crates or four sprues for each crate. 
Again, we've got some nice uh, detail on the wooden parts. And these are the center sections that go in that are gonna hold the bottles. So, I mean, it's all nicely detailed. Like I said, Mini Art are a uh, quite a well-known uh, brand that do make some rather interesting kits and figures. And this one is kind of up for me today. And then we move on to our bottles. We get two green bottle sprues. And I'm gonna have some fun cutting these out. And as we can see, we do actually get two different shapes. We get a standard sort of wine bottle shape. And then we get this sort of fluted sort of uh, shape bottle. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 16 bottles per sprue. So that's 32 green ones. And then we get two two sprues of the brown ones as well. Same difference in shape. We get the standard wine bottle and the fluted one. Now I have actually got some mini art wine bottle figures, uh, wine bottle kits as well. And they actually come with transfers to go on the bottles, which look an absolute nightmare. Luckily, these ones are just plain. So I'm guessing this is uh, sort of brandy that they've uh, been making off their own, uh, their own farm or something, perhaps. I do excuse my nails. I've obviously got uh, olive drab all over me because I have been painting today. So there we go. So there's our little uh, Mini Art 135 Calvado Calvados Cellars. As it's um, D-Day tomorrow, I'm going to go and uh, watch this film, Overlord, which is described as an unbelievable film, a must-see classic. Um, I've never heard of it. Apparently it was made in 1978. I'll read you what it says on here. Unheroic yet elegiac, tragic yet uplifting, devastating yet deeply moving, featuring gripping action on a scale unattainable by conventional war movies, Stuart Cooper's award-winning Overlord is unlike any war film you have ever seen. This powerful and passionate film follows the journey of an ordinary young English soldier, Private Bellows, from his swift dramatic introduction into the army towards his inexorable destiny upon the hell-ravaged beaches, beaches at Normandy during the D-Day invasion. Seamlessly weaving genuine World War II footage into a startlingly authentic story, Beautifully shot by Stanley Kubrick's acclaimed cinematographer, the legendary John Alcott, Overlord is not simply a unique piece of fiction, but an exceptional piece of history. So there we go. That's what I'm going to go and watch now. If you're wondering what happened with our um, builds, uh, we, we kind of procrastinated a bit today. We did do some painting. We got everything painted green, but as for putting things together, I really, I really didn't get very far, I'm afraid. So, yeah, we got everything painted in olive drab, but that's as far as I've got. So, um, June 6th is going to be a D-Day for me. I'm going to have to get all these things put together and kind of finished off, I suppose. So, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for joining me. And please do like and subscribe and join me for my model building ride from Normandy. Cheers.